The Voice of Indiana County, WCCS, AM 1160. 101.1 FM, Indiana in the Morning, brought to you by First Commonwealth Bank. Uh, joined this morning by a couple of representatives from the Blairsville Volunteer Fire Department. Zach Dixon, Abditoria, with us this morning. Gentlemen, welcome to Indiana in the Morning. Hey, good morning, Chuck. Good to be here. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, Blairsville Volunteer Fire Company, and I think a lot of folks don't realize that you are one of the few operations in the area that actually have a diving team. What's, what's the official name of this group? We are actually, uh, good morning, Chuck, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are actually an entity of the Blairsville Fire Department, so right. we are the Blairsville Water Rescue Team. Okay. Um, and we are not only composed of members from the Blairsville Fire Department, but um, other fire departments across Indiana County. Um, the bulk of our members are from Blairsville and actually Indiana. Mm-hmm. So we have 27 members on the roster right now. Um, those are all Swift Water members, and we also have 12 members that are certified divers. Now, when you think uh, of the Blairsville Fire Department, of course, you have the Connemaw River that comes through town, which is probably, what, the main reason for the uh, water rescue team? Well, it was probably one of the initials, um, but water rescue in itself came about because of need. Mm-hmm. Uh, at, at one time, it was strictly Indiana. And as times change, and for whatever reason, it started to uh, basically go away. Membership, lack of monies, funding, whatever. But we kind of picked up that, that slack, uh, so to say. And, and uh, it, obviously, we would handle things on the Connemaw River. But a lot mm-hmm. of times, that river is not deep enough to cause any problems. Although there are many holes and many, many situations that could occur. But it's all throughout the county and even beyond. And I'll let Zach expand on that. Yeah, um, so like you said, there's two different entities to the, the team there. We have the, the Swift Water team, which is more of an emergency response team. Um, and it's made up of the 27 members. And, and by the way, to, to join the team or to be an active member of a team, it takes roughly about 100 to 120 hours just to be on a Swift Water team. And that's a, of training in the certification process. Mm-hmm. Um, now on the dive dive side, it's a totally different animal. Um, gosh, I don't even know how many hours we have in dive training, but it's well over 100 per member. Um, our response area is, is immediately Indiana County. There's also two other swift water teams in Indiana County. One's out of Salzburg and one's out of Tunnelton. However, we are the only dive team. Um, if you go into Westmoreland County, they have two dive teams on that side and the other counties around us pretty much have one dive team apiece, so we may go across and we may pull them in to assist us because, um, you know, it takes, it takes about six divers to actually dive safely if we're, if we're searching for something. So we, we have to have guys down in the water and guys ready to help them if they need it. So that's, that's the reason for, for trying to build the team and also calling in um, outside resources when we are diving. Now, I would think of some of the other reasons why your group would be called in. You don't have to have a river. We have ponds in bodies of water in Indiana County. And uh, as we saw earlier this spring, heavy rains at times also cause flooding where there's no water around. Well, that's correct. And we were called into Westmoreland County several times, you know, with our SWIFT team because of flooding. You know, you know when you look, you probably are unfamiliar with it unless you've turned on mm-hmm. your television and you see it in Texas or you see where there's been hurricane action or flooding and it's usually the guys that are in the uh, yellow suits with a life jacket usually pulling a boat with them going door to door uh, getting people out of their flood surrounded homes that is a lot of what swift water rescue is and and again there's more to it than just putting a suit on and walking around there's many things that could happen uh, many uh, hazards that could happen uh, but it's a very necessary group and We've expanded it uh, to include a lot of membership throughout the county, and we were just talking about that on the way up. You, you don't ever want to be outnumbered by the hazard or, or the catastrophe, so to say, and you want to make sure you have enough people given the time of the day and, and uh, where jobs are involved and so forth. So by having people out of different areas, we hope to keep our numbers to where they need to be Specifically, if we pay, perhaps only have one or two people available in Blairsville, we may have some coming in from Blacklick or, like we said, the other teams in Indiana County. The scuba dive team itself, like Zach mentioned, is a completely different animal. 
And, and it's not so much in hours to become a diver. There's all the different certifications that you need to become a better diver. You know, for example, wearing a, a, a wetsuit as opposed to a dry suit, where the dry suit would be used in extremely cold water, where the wetsuit you probably can handle temperatures into the 40s, high 30s, but, and that depends on how long you're going to be in the water. There's uh, all types of uh, classes that go beyond that. Uh, we have certification for full face masks. We have uh, rescue certification. Uh, training with first aid and, and injury and accident certification. So there's a lot that goes involved with this. And I'll be quite honest with you, Chuck. When I first got involved with this, I always wanted to learn how to do it. And what better way to learn how to do it where it's free, the training, and you have excellent equipment. Um, and, and just the camaraderie of it, too, is, is, a, is a big part of it. There's, there's no doubt about that. Uh, the water that we dive in or the water that we go in is not always pleasant. It's not always clean. It's very rarely clear. But uh, I did, I was, you know, I wanted to mention to Zach, too, and all these guys, if you ever get a chance to go somewhere where the water's clear, it's like a whole different world. And I had that opportunity uh, when I was in Hawaii. I didn't have to take any lessons or anything. I just presented all my cards. And that's a whole new world in itself where you, no matter where you look, you see something you've never seen before. So I would recommend anybody that's a member of this to have that opportunity to take advantage of it as I did. But I, again, it's a, it's a very necessary thing when it's needed. Do we use it every day of the week? No, you know, but it's something that I think we have planned well for. And that's why I wanted Zach to be here. He is one of the main driving forces in this group. Um, we, I think we are better today because of Zach and certainly because of uh, some of our younger members who have really grabbed onto this and, and uh, driven it to the level that it's at right now. You know, it's not just something that we hang on the wall. I think it's something that's a, a work in progress and will continue to always be a work in progress. I know how difficult it is these days to get members to join volunteer fire departments. How hard is it to get somebody to be part of these teams? Well, uh, it's actually a, uh, it's a, it's a add-on to the fire department. So to even become a member of the water team, you have to first be an active member of a volunteer fire department in Indiana or West Portland counties. Um, for the Blairsville Fire Department, um, you can join the SWIFT team anytime you want as long as you're an active member. But to be a diver, you actually have to be an active member for three years before you can even take dive classes. And the reason for that, Chuck, is it's just simply – too expensive to let uh, let everybody go through it. Dive gear is person specific, um, wetsuits, buoyancy compensators, masks, everything's person specific, and uh, we, we just basically have to look out for the best interests of the department and uh, make sure that somebody's going to stick around before we make a massive investment mm -hmm. in them to train them and qualify them to be a diver. That was the next item I wanted to bring up. This is completely different equipment than the normal volunteer fireman would have to work with. Well, there's no doubt about that. Uh, you want to see somebody get irritated. Go to a scene of swift water or go to a scene uh, where you're actually go, going to go underwater and have someone show up in full bunker gear near the water. You're mm -hmm. asking for another victim. You know, you, that, that's bulky, heavy clothing. It's not meant to be in water. The boots themselves, if you fill your boots up with water, that's mm -hmm. another thing that's going to take you down. Uh, you don't want anybody in the vicinity of any type of rescue scene or accident scene that would have the bunker gear on you have to be wearing the proper equipment because uh, again we're not looking for another catastrophe to happen is there some new equipment that's making it a little bit easier when you have to enter the water uh, you know diving hasn't changed a lot in, you know in, in years i think some of the things that we've worked with the full face mask is, is something that is a little different than just wearing the goggles that right. cover your nose and your eyes because, uh, you know, you have a, a greater field of vision uh, and, and probably some of the innovation coming there is that there are communications now. Some are wired, some are wireless, where you can actually talk to your partner underwater in those conditions. So that's somewhat new. Uh, dry suits have been around for a while, but dry suits have their special characteristics too because it allows you to go in water that's you know perhaps frozen on the top and you have to go under the ice and 
obviously that's very cold. You could do it in a wet soup, but you're not going to nearly last as long as you would in a dry soup, which is heavy rubber opposed to a neoprene. And neoprene comes in various levels. You know, if you go and wear a skin diving suit when you're in, uh, say, water off the Gulf Coast where it's 75 degrees, 80 degrees, it's a very thin mm -hmm. type of neoprene as opposed to around here where we will probably dive in six to seven mil layer of neoprene and that's going to help keep your your body warmth uh, to where it needs to be so you can be somewhat comfortable for a certain amount of time. Are there devices that help you with vision when you're under the water? I'm thinking like a GPS or some type of camera that... Uh, well, as, as far as the, the innovative equipment goes, Chuck, uh, I mean, there's no... The fundamentals of scuba diving haven't changed in, you know, 100 years, but the newer equipment and the newer style equipment what it does is improve the safety factor with diving. Um, you know, our full face masks, yes, they are a lot more expensive than a, mm -hmm. than a mouth uh, held regulator, but you know what, they're able to be flow tested every year. Um, if there's a failure, it's, it's, it's not gonna happen because we, we're able to test those every year. The dry suits, um, what we're looking at for dry suits is keeping the members, the scuba divers, away from contamination hazards. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we go fully dry and we have a dry hood on and a full face mask, you know, our divers aren't subject to anything in that's water. And if you're diving post-flood, um, contamination's a big concern. And that's the same on the swift side as well. You know, the, the newer equipment um, doesn't change much how we operate, but it does make things a little easier. The newer boat motors, um, they're four-stroke now instead of two-stroke. So they're going to turn with the, the they're going to start with a turn of a key, or they're going to pull on the second pull now instead mm -hmm. of trying to mess with them and get them started. So um, the fundamentals don't change, but the newer and more updated our equipment is, the safer and more professional our team can be. And finally, if somebody would like to become involved with the dive unit at Blairsville, a uh, number that they can call or contact? Uh, you know, we are on, the best place for us would probably be on Facebook, mm -hmm. Blairsville Fire Department Facebook page. Um, stop by the fire department any Monday night between 7 and 9 p.m. We'll be there. Zach Dixon, Abdutori, joining us this morning from the Blairsville Volunteer Fire Department here on Indiana in the Morning. Don't forget, coming up uh, next hour, we'll speak with a representative from the AAUW and the Indiana Rotary. We'll be stopping by at 945 this morning to fill us in on their luxury raffle. We'll take a look at news, our Fox report coming up at the top of the hour. Josh will have Indiana County News. Jack with the Check of Sports here on Indiana in the Morning on WCCS 1160 AM. Get out to the forest and discover the